No, that's, that steering is fucking incredible. Honestly, it is awesome. Probably the best upgrade you've ever do to a cat. Here we are down in the captain's workshop. Well, not really, we're down in Bansdale at Ace Marine. This is Chris Bennis, little home of Digital Wizards. They're in the background, toiling away. Cam is in the old shark cap, getting ready to fit some new digital steering. Cam here, Ace Marine Electrical, down in Bansdale, fitting up Optimus electronic steering. So if you know anything about cats, as good as they are, they steer like a lunchbox. How does she handle, mate? Like a brick. Today what we're going to do is fit some new digital steering. So this old system at the front here, this is the high drive Admiral system. So there's two rams, obviously for two motors. We've got the motors sitting up here in the background. A key feature of this system is that it's driven by oil, half of which often ends up at your feet. Another feature of the old system is the autopilot computer here. So that drives the hydraulic pump, which is here. This system's been pretty good, but uh, given the opportunity to go to a digital system, I'll take that every day. Well, I got the shitty job of de-rigging the captain's hydraulic steering out of the shark cat. That's a cat. This is a dog. Come here, Ferg. Come here. Uh, when you do take apart the hydraulic steering, it's good to have proper tools to do it with. Don't just get in there and cut the lines because, you know, you want to reuse a lot of it or you can unsell it to someone else that can reuse it. Watch out for the oil, it's going to get messy. There's uh, plenty of oil that does come out of lines. Try to bleed some of the lines of the oil first prior to doing it. Well, it's out with the old system. And it's onto the new system. These two actuators here are the brains of the system. They run brushless motors and they sit exactly where your old rams would. So one thing we had to do on the cat to fit these is remove the motors. We just asked our good friend Roger down at Beach Boats if he could knock up a stand for us, which he did. The new system is obviously all electronic, drawing 12 volts of power from the batteries. This is the electronic helm. Uh, we've opted for a fairly simple unit. We've put a little wedge in there just to give us a little bit more angle at the helm. We've obviously also adjusted the position of the helm as well. So the electronic helm has friction plates. I can adjust those friction plates all through the can track display, depending on how much resistance I want at the helm. Some of the adjustments we can make uh, in the Optimus can track display um, is our rudder limit at low and high speeds. Um, obviously at high speed, we don't want to be turning the rudder as far as we would at low speed when we're docking, etc. Um, we can also adjust our helm turns. So at low speed, um, we've set three and a half turns of the steering wheel um, for lock to lock. You can spin the steering wheel really fast as well, especially when you're below that low RPM mark, three and a half turns from lock to lock. Um, high speed, obviously we want more turns, um, so the steering um, isn't quite as sharp to respond. Um, so yeah, it's, it's higher locks to turn at higher speed, just to make it a little bit safer so that you don't uh, hit the wheel a little bit too hard and throw your passengers out, um, as Trav tried to do to me earlier. <laughs> the way the steering's set up at the moment, at uh, low speed, it's uh, currently set at 30% resistance, and then once you're up on the plane going at higher speeds, we've got it dialed into 70%, so it's a bit tighter. And then when the autopilot's turned on, you've got it set to 90%, uh, percent, so that if you do accidentally bump the steering wheel, it's not gonna throw it out of its autopilot mode. You're probably wondering how this system's supposed to know whether we're at uh, high speed or low speed. Um, these particular Suzuki engines will be fitting a harness um, to link back into the network, which will give us a uh, taco reading. The unique thing about this system is that it's fully electric. So it's not an electric helm driving a pump, driving oil-filled rams. This is a full electronic system. That was the first time I drove this boat since he rigged it up with the new Optimus Prime steering. <laughs> it, it's silk, you know, I had Sea Star um, uh, hydraulic, electric over hydraulic on my boat and it, it's not like this. If you move it, it turns. It's like one-on-one. -on -one. There is no sloppiness, it will deliver precise steering. There'll be no lazy motor as has been the case in the past. Yeah, full throttle, full lock, figure eights, one one hand. I race mono hulls, circuit racing, and there's no way I'd be able to do a figure eight that sharp 
and that fast. The steering was that that tight. Um, it outperformed my capabilities completely. I couldn't hold on. And it probably could go sharper, but I just couldn't hold on. No types of sponginess from the motors, no movement. Just wherever I put it, 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 it done what it said. Comparing it to a hydraulic steering system, there's no uh, pressure on the wheel when you try and turn. It's, it just does exactly what you tell it to do. So in simple terms, all the information sent from the helm to the actuators is relayed to your can track, which will be mounted up on the shark cap. We've got our Optimus can track display here. Simple as grabbing our lead, plugging it in, and uh, dropping her into our beautiful new dash. The SCU, or steering control unit, can respond to inputs from an autopilot. In this case, we are using a little part called a NACD, and this is unique to the SIMRAD system. So this little part here replaces all this. About the only part that stays the same is the steering wheel, but we couldn't do that, so we have the one with the knob. The actual installation of the electronic actuators was quite simple, um, with the diagrams provided. Quite a simple install. Um, bull horns go on. Um, to the steering ram, and the steering ram just bolts up through the tiller bracket here. Very similar fit up to a uh, standard hydraulic ram, um, only no oil. So obviously with the install as well, um, we've replaced the main tilt shaft um, to suit the new bull horns. Um, that's basically where your outboard pivots um, when you're trimming and tilting it. Um, and we made sure to fill that full of grease as well. So obviously the, uh, the ram itself um, doesn't get greased. Um, being an electronic unit with brushless motors, um, it's completely sealed. So we don't have to worry about the mechanical goobers. Dometic have spent over 10,000 hours testing and uh, designing this system. Um, so I'm pretty confident that it's gonna be a good thing. Boys are giving me a bloody hurry up. They wanna get these things on the boat. So we're up the uh, nerve center of the boat here at the helm, ready to fit the new Optimus helm, uh, electronic helm. Simple as plugging in this cable. Wild's been good to us. He's uh, already relocated all the holes and everything for us. So we can just slot this bad boy in there and uh, I'll jump in behind it and do up the nuts. Oh, geez, Trav. Oh. Neat feature of this system uh, with the digital rams um, is these outboards are quite well locked in. Uh, any other boat with hydraulic steering, you'd have quite a lot more play right here. Yeah, so the boys, when they fit the steering up, they changed the helm position. It was um, a little bit further across to the right-hand side of the boat and a little bit lower. Uh, it's, it's just been moved into more of a, a smarter spot, really, yeah. It makes it very nice to drive. It all feels very comfortable, which is also a hard thing to find in boats. A lot of people don't put things where it's comfortable to drive. Where They put it sort of where it fits better. So up the front, we're running a NSS Evo 3, nine inch as well and a S2009 sounder. Part of this particular install, we've got a new Simrad AP44 control head for the autopilot and an Optimus can track display, um, which will basically give us a digital heads up of what the rudders are doing. So commonly on outboard engines, it's hard to get a rudder feedback from the steering system using hydraulic. So that's another massive advantage with, with this Optimus electronic steering rams, the fact that we can see that rudder information on all our Simrad systems, on our Optimus system, and it gives us much better autopilot integration. All these components hooked together in the NEMA 2000 network. They uh, share data such as depth, heading, speed, um, chart information, um, as well as from our Optimus can track display, it'll push across the rudder values to our autopilot and SIMRAD. Finally, we've got another tricky little bit of kit, a uh, remote for our autopilot. Um, we can control our autopilot and basically steer our boat from this handy little piece here. So we can switch our autopilot into auto from this remote. We can also go back into starboard, but when we're in auto mode, we can adjust our, our heading or our course by just going one push of the button, one degree at a time, or we can hold down for two seconds at a time to add plus 10 degrees to our heading. The big question is, is it worth it? Um, we're looking at over $20,000 worth of componentry here, plus however many slabs I have to pay Chris to get this fitted. Yeah, so the one thing I do know about these cats is steering's definitely not their strong point, and the fact that we've been able to retrofit this boat with 
digital steering has just changed the whole feel of the boat completely. Not everyone's going to want to replace engines, so this is a great retrofit up to bring older Suzuki engines, like on Trav's boat here, up to modern spec steering. Like the, the smiles speak for themselves with the guys. Never been in a cat that steers as well as this thing. This electronic steering is just unreal. It's actually probably the best upgrade you could ever do to a cat.